In this video, we'll take a look at a piece of vintage Heathkit test equipment, the IM5284 multimeter. I'll discuss the history and features of this instrument, and we'll look at the front panel controls and inside circuitry. I'll cover the restoration of the unit and say something about the circuit design it used. We'll see a demonstration of the instrument in operation and then wrap things up with a summary. Heathkit was a manufacturer of electronics in kit form. Their product line included amateur radio, test equipment, and various consumer products. By building a piece of electronics, you could save money and gain the satisfaction of having assembled it yourself. A multimeter is an electronic instrument that can measure a number of different electrical values, typically voltage, current, and resistance. One of the simplest types is the volt ohm milliammeter or VOM, which is just an analog meter with appropriate switching for different measurement modes and ranges. The vacuum tube voltmeter or VTVM used tube circuitry to improve the sensitivity and accuracy of measurements. By the late 1960s, integrated circuits made it feasible to implement a digital multimeter where the measured value is shown as numeric digits rather than being read off of an analog meter. The IM5284 multimeter is similar in design and features to a VTVM, except that all of the circuitry is solid state and uses transistors. It was made from 1977 to 1983, and the cost, like the rest of the 5280 series, was typically US $49.95. The 5280 series of test instruments was introduced starting in 1977 and included five models, the IG5280RF oscillator, IB5281RLC bridge, IG5282 audio oscillator, IT5283 signal tracer, and IM5284 multimeter. They were marketed as a value priced line of equipment for hobbyists and sold for under $50 each. Part of the concept was that the instruments provided most of what was needed for basic electronics testing and repair. You could assemble your bench of test equipment one unit at a time. The cost was kept low by keeping features to a minimum, using common components such as the plastic case, using single-sided printed circuit boards, and running on batteries. They had limited functions, lacking knobs for some controls, and no feet or pilot lights. The optional power supply, the IPA5280-1, could power up to five instruments at once and typically sold for $35.95 US. Some critics now look back on the series as the beginning of the end for Heathkit as they were being squeezed on price and began to compromise on quality and features. To be fair, the instruments did provide the basic features and were a good value for the price. Most of the units were powered by two 9-volt batteries or the optional power supply. The cases could be stacked to fit on a test bench and featured a built-in handle and storage area. They were also in the shade of blue that was used for most Heathkit test equipment of this era. The series began to be discontinued starting in 1983 and the last models were offered in 1991. The IM5284 is a multimeter that can measure AC and DC voltage, DC current and resistance. While the features are similar to a VOM, it uses field effect transistors in the input circuit and so has a high input impedance which reduces the loading of the circuit under test. It can measure DC voltages in four ranges, 0 to 1, 10, 100, and 1000 volts full scale with an accuracy of plus or minus 3%. The input resistance is 10 megohms. It can measure AC voltage with the same ranges and the same 3% accuracy. The input resistance is 1 megohm. It can measure DC current at four ranges from 0 to 1, 10, 100, and 1,000 milliamps at plus or minus 4% accuracy. And finally, it can measure resistance with ranges of R times 1, times 100, times 10,000, and times 1 million at plus or minus 3% accuracy. It has a 4.5 inch meter, and the circuit uses two field effect transistors, two silicon transistors, and two silicon diodes. It's powered by two 9-volt batteries, or the IPA5280-1 power supply. It also requires a 1.5-volt C cell for the resistance ranges. As well as being portable, one advantage of running on battery power is that the unit is floating with respect to ground. The left knob selects one of four ranges, 1, 10, 100, or 1,000 volts or milliamps, 
or for resistance times 1 times 100 times 10,000 or times 1 million. The right knob selects the function off, AC volts, DC volts minus, DC volts plus, ohms or milliamps. You can select DC plus or minus to avoid having to switch the leads, which can otherwise be a problem when running on the AC power supply as the negative lead is grounded. The zero adjust knob needs to be adjusted so that the meter reads zero with no input. Typically you only need to adjust it once and it applies to all functions and ranges. It may need to be adjusted periodically as the batteries run down. The ohms adjust knob is adjusted so that the meter reads full scale when the test leads are open on the ohms function. It also typically only needs to be set periodically. Banana jacks are provided which mate with the included red and black test leads. Measurements are read off of the meter. Note that the AC 1 and 10 volt scales are separate from the other ones. This is because the rectifier in the circuit is not quite linear at low voltages and introduces some error. The 1 volt range on AC actually goes to 1.2 volts. Circuitry is on one small single-sided printed circuit board with a lot of point-to-point -point wiring around the two rotary switches. It's a very simple circuit and most of the complexity is just the switching between functions and ranges. It uses two FETs or field effect transistors and two bipolar transistors and features a bridge circuit similar to VTVM designs. The range switching circuitry uses 1% precision resistors. The unit is not fused. The meter is protected to some extent by a diode across it. It uses the same battery holder arrangement as other units in the series with two 9 volt batteries. There's also a C battery which is used for the ohms function. This unit does not have the optional connector for the external AC power supply. The parts for this came with the power supply kit. It consisted of a different cover plate with a switch and connector. I have the power supply and some spare connectors and plan to retrofit this unit to optionally use external power. The calibration procedure consists of adjusting the three trim pots with different wire jumpers attached. It's a bit awkward as you need to solder and resolder the wires and doing this too many times risks damaging some of the PCB tracks. I soldered header pins to the test points so that I can easily connect jumper leads without soldering. It can be calibrated without any other instruments by using the C battery as a 1.5 volt DC reference and either an internal voltage or the 120 volt AC line voltage as an AC voltage reference. If you have a multimeter and or an accurate DC and AC supply voltage, you can use that instead. The current and ohms ranges are not calibrated separately. Let's run through a quick demonstration of the unit operating. After turning it to the desired function, you may need to adjust the zero adjust control if it's not at zero. You select the function and then the range. Here's an example of measuring DC voltage from a variable power supply. The meter is on the 10 volt range and reads about 8 volts. If we want to measure a negative voltage, you can switch to the DC minus function or switch the test leads provided that the meter and the unit under test are not both grounded. AC voltage is similar. Here I'm measuring the output of a variac or auto transformer with the function set to AC and getting a reading of about 75 volts AC. Now I'm measuring DC current using a power supply and a resistance decade box set to 1000 ohms. With about 8 volts input, we're seeing the expected 8 milliamps. It can measure up to 1000 milliamps or 1 amp. For the ohms function, you need to turn the ohms adjust knob so that it reads full scale or infinite resistance with the test leads open. Then also check that with the lead shorted, it reads zero. With the resistance decade box connected, I can read off various values of resistance.
For the best accuracy, you want to select a range that will bring the reading to the lower end of the scale. Note that the voltage and current ranges are multiples of 10, so there's not much overlap between them. So for example, to measure 12 volts, you would have to use the 100 volt scale. The accuracy is plus or minus 3% of full scale, which means it's accurate to plus or minus 3 volts on this range. Similarly, if I measured 120 volts AC, I would have to use the 1000 volt range, where accuracy is theoretically only plus or minus 30 volts. There's no pilot light or other indicator, so you need to remember to power the unit off to avoid draining the batteries. I bought this unit on eBay in May 2015. It was a little dirty but in good shape with few scratches or other issues. It came with test leads but didn't come with a manual. I was able to find schematics and calibration information on the internet. I also found and purchased a manual on eBay shortly after I bought this unit but have not received it yet. As I mentioned, this one does not have the power supply option. There's a small break in the plastic on the lid but it does not show. When received, it still had two 9-volt batteries and one C-cell inside. Two jumpers need to be installed for normal operation. As I was restoring it, the black jumper wire came off. With it back in place and with new batteries, all functions seem to be working. I cleaned the unit and ran through the calibration procedure. After doing this, it seemed to be quite accurate on all functions and ranges. In the future, I may replace the large paper cap as it may have become electrically leaky but I think I'll wait until I receive the manual and run through the whole assembly procedure. In summary, the advantages of the IM5284 included low cost, a large easy to read meter, battery or AC operation, support for making basic measurements, and high input impedance as compared to a VOM. The major drawbacks were a limited number of ranges, relatively low accuracy, harder to read than a digital multimeter, no AC current ranges, large size, and limited safety features, i.e. there's no fuses and the same jacks are used for voltage and current measurements. Overall, it was a good value for the money, and because you assembled it yourself, you could service it. This is the fourth instrument of the 5280 series that I own. The last unit of the series, the signal tracer, was also recently acquired and will be covered in a future video. Now that I have the complete set, I can then put together my state-of-the-art circa 1977 test bench of Heathkit instruments. You can learn more about multimeters and other instruments in my book Classic Heathkit Electronic Test Equipment. The book covers Heathkit's test equipment products starting with a brief history of Heathkit, an overview of the test equipment product lines and tips on buying and restoring vintage test equipment from sources like eBay. Separate chapters cover all the major categories of electronic test equipment and each chapter includes one or more in-depth sections that look at a representative model from my Heathkit collection covering its features, operation, and notable quirks or trivia. The book is available from lulu.com and Amazon and retails for US $19.95. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other YouTube videos on vintage radio and test equipment.